All right, so here we are. This is section 8.2, where we're going to look at 2D problems of the Brion zone and the reciprocal lattice. Uh, we have started in the last segment um, where we looked at functions that repeat themselves in the, uh, within a certain lattice, and we wanted to expand that function onto its reciprocal lattice. So in 1D, this was very simple, and it, there was a one on one. Uh, relationship between the basis and the expansion. So here what we did is we took a function that is of interest to us, ultimately that was the content of a, a wave function, the solution of Schrodinger's equation. But if you just step back and not worry so much right now on the, on the uh, Schrodinger equation, it's about the representation of the space in X that is uh, repeated. So now we uh, built a Fourier transform of this. And uh, what we want to do is represent this function here in Fourier space. And what we need are coefficients and basis states that go with these coefficients. And um, often the, the index is called k. And you have a k as 2 pi over n. Um, this is a typo here. My apologies. And so you have a representation that looks like this. And there's multiple notations where often people also use G as uh, the Fourier space component or the, sp the, uh, the spatial Fourier space component. So they talk about a reciprocal lattice uh, called G. All right. They're the same thing. It's just a slightly different notation. Don't be confused when you look at some literature. All right. So now let's expand this into two dimension. Now we consider a, uh, a function that can be, uh, is repeated in, uh, uh, in real space by a, a Bravi lattice, by a lattice vector in two dimensions. So A1, A2 span open the primitive Bravi lattice vectors in two dimensions. Any of these two uh, in integers, N1 and N2, that map you back to the original function that is just inside your single uh, 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 unit cell. Ultimately, we then want to represent this function f of r that is living on that space into coefficients um, that are representative of this, uh, the spatial spectrum. Okay, so we call gm then the reciprocal uh, uh, space basis. And right now we're interested in, in the relationship between Rn, capital Rn, and capital Gn. So we have a Bravi lattice um, where uh, physical properties repeat themselves according to a real space repeated cell, and we want to represent that into a Fourier space. The question is how do we get these this reciprocal space basis? Later, when we worry about shorting equation, we end up computing these Fourier coefficients on that basis. So right now we're just dealing with a basis. So what is the reciprocal basis uh, given any Bravi lattice? Uh, let's uh, write down some expressions here that, that lead us into the right direction. So if we want to expand the function f of r in terms of a reciprocal base basis like this, and we know that f of r repeats, we can, uh, we can plug in the term here, and we know that this, these two, uh, the left and the right hand side here, must be identical because the result is physically the same. Well, if that's true, we can pull out this term igm rn out of the sum, and we end up seeing, oh, this is the same term here and here. So that means that this exponential with a dot product between the two vectors must be 1. That means the dot product of these vectors must be 2 pi n, where n is any integer. All right. So, so that really defines one critical criterion between uh, these reciprocal spaces. And um, let's 
uh, assume that we represent this GM with M1, B1, M2, B2, and we want to uh, uh, obtain these. And really what GM is, it's the Fourier transform of Rn. So you can take uh, an approach and carry this uh, s forward slowly where you represent it in periodic delta functions, for example, for any of the standard five Bravi lattices, and you can obtain GM. What I'm doing here is I'm giving you the final recipe. How do you get from A1 and A2 to B1 and B2 in the respective lattices? So here is the recipe for B1. B1 is the rotation out of A2 normalized by itself with a dot product out of A1. So R is the rotation matrix and the angle of rotation is determined by the inner product of A1 and A2. Okay, so B2 is similar. B2 is a rotation out of A1 normalized by itself and the dot product of the original vector A2. All right, let's make this a little bit more concrete. Here's the full recipe. Uh, let's make this a little bit more concrete on a simple square lattice, which is the simplest of all of these examples. So let's choose A1 being A times X, if you will, and B A2 is A times Y, if you look like the X and Y notation of a Cartesian coordinate, or in the vector notation here, it's 1, 0, and 0, 1. All right, the cosine theta of A dot a, a1 dot A2 is 0, that means theta is 90 degrees, and that means the rotation matrix as cosine minus sine sine cosine becomes 0 minus 1, 1, 0. All right, let's carry through this example here, where the rotation of A1 is, here's the rotation matrix, uh, A1 pulled forward, 1, 0, so this is A times 0, 1, which turns out to be A2. So the rotation matrix in this system of rotates A1 into A2 by 90 degrees. Rather making sense, so here's A1, A2, at the end the B1 is a rotator, is, is really A2. Now, if we do the same and rotate A2, and <clears throat> plug this matrix in, we get A1. And if we normalize these coefficients like this, so you normalize here in the case of B1, you take the RA2 here and normalize it by A1, you get basically B1 is 2 pi A. 1, 0, which is proportional to A1. So it's in direction of A1. B1 is direction of A1. You can do the same here for B2, and you end up A1 uh, related to B1, and it's 2 pi over A, and B2 is 2 pi over A, uh, A2. So you map square to square. So that's the simplest reciprocal lattice of a two-dimensional system. A square lattice map in a real space maps into a square map lattice into reciprocal space. And the Brion zone is, of course, then also identical. You can obtain it with a usual uh, wigner zeitz uh, methodology, where you uh, draw lines to the uh, nearest neighbors, and you segment those lines in half, and that gives you the uh, uh, the Brion zone. Now, if we look at an example for a hexagonal lattice, um, which I'll leave you to compute yourself, you can uh, get a system uh, as well. You can do the computation and you can derive the Brion zone in the same wigner zeitz methodology. That being said, we now learned that uh, there is really only five 2D lattices that describe any periodic space in two dimensions. So, um, as a faculty member, I'm kind of running out of examples to, for students to calculate. 
and I would suggest that the, these are, might be good exercises to actually calculate what the um, uh, reciprocal lattice vectors and the reciprocal lattice uh, unit cells, etc., are. So I leave that up to you to explore. So uh, this really concludes the segment on 2D uh, problems. We have these five uh, Brion uh, lattices in 2D. We have a methodology to obtain the reciprocal vectors. You can tabulate it, um, you can memorize the functions. And uh, now we're going to step over and do the same thing for a 3D system where there is more basis sets, more, more Bravi lattices, and a couple more interesting symmetries.